Welcome to Blackheath Meeting. Blackheath is a small village community in southeast London. The Quaker Meeting House is located five minutes from the station. Quakers have worshipped together worldwide for over 300 years, and in Blackheath for 50. Our purpose-built contemporary meeting house is where we gather on Sunday mornings. Visiting us is straightforward. Of course, anybody can come to a Quaker meeting. There's somebody on the door, you walk in the door, you shake hands, walk into the meeting house, sit down. That's it. Easy. Quakers are very friendly people, and um, you will find that if you've come for the first time, um, people who've been there um, previously will, will seek you out so that they can um, make you feel at home and introduce you to others and make sure that you felt settled in the meeting. The, the group responded in a friendly way, I would say, but didn't actually um, try to pressurise me in any particular direction, and I appreciated that. I can remember when I first started going to a uh, Quaker meeting that uh, some friends invited me on an outing and said, and I said, no, I've got my Quaker meeting to go to. And they said, oh, well, you can just sit in the car and for an hour in silence, just we won't talk to you. I said, no, it doesn't work like that. There's something quite specific that happens in a Quaker meeting to do with the silence that's communal, that everyone focuses. And uh, we have an, a very nice phrase for this, and it happens very quickly in Blackheath meeting. It seems that within about 10 minutes, a, th a process happens called centering down, where you feel a, a, a extra special stillness and calm and waiting that everyone is participating in and that makes it makes something quite remarkable about a Quaker meeting, I think. To come to a Quaker meeting, you certainly do not need to be a Christian or need to concern yourself whether you are or whether you aren't. Everybody there is searching, seeking, they're on a spiritual path. They may have started with the Jewish faith. They may have started as an atheist. They may have been in, born into a Quaker family. They may certainly have been Christian. And they may certainly wish to retain some of their traditional ways of behaving, ways of praying. But we're all on a journey. Your presence, your concentration, your focus on the silence, your knowledge that we're there all together, all concentrating on getting rid of the trivia in our lives and focusing on those things that are, what we call it, that of God. The time when we meet on a Sunday is a very special time, a very separate and focused time that enables us to put the rest of the week and the rest of our lives into perspective. It gives me time to gather my thoughts and to draw them together. But then there's a difference between that and meditation because it's a shared experience. It's the way in which you do, in the silence, listen for God or the Divine Spirit or whatever you want to, to call that. We could have shared prayers, but we feel that words get in the way an awful lot of the real experience of communication and one's spiritual life. I suppose the reason we don't have music is roughly similar 
It's to do with being simple and engaged in the moment and not having anything external that interferes with that. Very often I think about uh, what do I believe? Do I believe anything? I'm not sure. I understand the world. I understand a lot about our scientific understanding of the world and that seems to be important and a good explanation and my goodness it's it's a it's wonderful it's absolutely amazing <laughs> and I can think about that for hours <laughs> so that's uh, that's some of the things I think about in meeting I find it uh, very uh, interesting what uh, happens with me anyway during the silence I just uh, before very long I'm feeling much more at peace than I was and there's a, a sense that um, most everybody if not everybody uh, around me is is also there's there's a, a certain sense is the best word that I know for it I have been in um, a meeting where uh, it was completely silent all the way through. No one stood up to minister, to say anything. But most of the time, uh, there are two or three or four or five people who uh, stand up and uh, say something. Anyone can speak in a Quaker meeting for worship. It's open for anybody to minister. And it's just a question of waiting until you feel compelled to do so. For me there's a sort of um, winnowing process I suppose that if I feel moved to say something, if there's something that I feel compelled to get up and say then there's a process over, I couldn't put a time on it, but over the meeting for worship in the silence where you're working through the thoughts around that and how you want to express it and how you how you want to say it so people will understand what it is that you're trying to say. But it's only when they feel, and this is my experience and I presume it's other people's as well, uh, that there's something there which is important and needs sharing that people would somehow be able to relate to, if you like, that one quickly thinks of what are the words, perhaps, and then stand. This is not an audience and this audience, not audience, is not critical. They're listening to what you're listening to in your own mind. So they're somehow empathising with it. And it's very supportive. Ministry isn't a lecture, and it's not the beginning of a discussion. People, you know, say what's on their minds and on their hearts. Quakers are well known for their initiatives in peacemaking. And some Quakers would describe themselves as pacifists. But I think that it goes rather more than that. So that you have Quakers all over the world who are involved in conflict resolution and mediation. Thinking about there is something good in everybody and trying not to create an enemy, which leads on to the Peace Testament, which is very much part of the Quaker belief. I think some Quakers don't feel that they are at a stage within themselves where they would be able to say that they would never commit a violent act. But I think Quakers believe that is how you want to be where there, in a place where there are no wars and you're working towards the condition where there wouldn't be any war. One of the great features of being a Quaker is being encouraged to think for yourself, to experience for yourself. This doesn't mean being highly intellectual, but it means being honest and open. One of the great Quaker um, 
sayings from vices and queries is live adventurously. Don't live with your mind closed, live with your mind open, go forward. When my five-year-old was first born, I started attending a Quaker meeting regularly and he, was, um, he would sit in his car seat and sleep for most of the meeting when he was a little tiny baby and it was lovely. Um, and as he grew older, um, I was it's quite a small meeting. He would sit on a blanket on the floor and I would take some quiet toys for him to play with. And it was quite an elderly meeting. Um, generally, and I think people really loved seeing my little baby growing. When I started to come to Blackheath meeting, I was really pleased to find that there was an established children's meeting um, with a wide variety of um, ages of children. We all gather, the two adults who are on the rotor and the children, in a circle on cushions and start by telling each other what we've been doing. The adults and the children on the floor are at the same level. We all use first names, and so it's a tiny community beginning. Um, then we have a minute's silence. And then generally we have a story um, which can be something with a religious theme, it can be any religion, it doesn't, um, it's not always Christianity, we take quite a lot from other, um, from other faiths. One of the recent activities that we did was a focus on the environment and recycling. We had a book called George Saves the World by Lunchtime about a little boy called George spending some time with his grandfather and he says he wants to be a superhero and so his grandfather's shows him all the different things that he can do throughout the day, little things like turning off the lights, turning off the taps while he's brushing his teeth, recycling, growing their own vegetables, eating local food, um, mending things, taking things to charity shops. Um, um, and then at the end of that, we, um, uh, the person that was running children's meeting that day had brought in a load of junk and the children then made things out of, um, out of the junk and some of them, some of them made superhero uh, face masks. Shortly before the end of children's meeting, we come back to the carpet for a little bit, bit more quiet time. Um, we give the children some juice and a snack um, and just get them to calm down a little bit. We talk about what's going to happen when they go up into big meeting. And then we all go up into big meeting about five minutes before the end. Um, and the children then sit, join their parents and sit quietly. And then at the end of the meeting, we all shake hands. They're very much a part of it, very welcome. And very often they bring what they've been doing, they've been making something or doing drawings, and they bring it and show it to us or share it with us. Getting them to lay their hands on a piece of paper so they could draw rhyme them, then later cut them out. So they ended up with a multitude of coloured hands. And they stuck these onto a large bit of paper to make a wonderful display. And if the display was organized in circles, so it looked like a gathering of people touching fingers. The idea was it's the collaboration of a meeting. Um, and they're really, really pleased to be able to show everybody a meeting and it connects um, the adults with the children. Um, and I think that's quite special. Um, and then during the notices, which can be quite long and quite tedious for little people to sit through, we have um, paper and pencils so that the, the children can sit on the floor and do colouring whilst the, big, whilst the notices are going on. But generally, um, people don't mind at all the noises that children make, and I think a lot of people find it um, a welcome. Um, we find the addition of the children, the contribution of the children to the meeting um, really welcome and inspiring to a lot of people. Everybody always seems to smile when the children enter in that last five minutes and obviously because of their difference in ages some of them find it easier to be quiet for, the home for five minutes and some don't. Um, it doesn't matter if they want to talk, if they want to tell their mother what, or father what they've been doing. And 
to a little degree, the, even the very young children begin to make eye contact with these funny, serious adults who are sitting around in silence. And it's noticeable how even the very young children get used to the idea of sitting in silence. And so when we had a marriage in April, the children actually came in and sat in the meeting for worship from the beginning because it was important that they heard the couple make their marriage declarations. You won't be asked to draw it if you uh, come to a Quaker meeting. Um, you'll be made to feel very welcome. And I never had any pressure put on me to join. Um, indeed, I, you know, I, you can go on forever being an attendant. I've been an attender for um, about 10 years on and off. Um, and then I decided that it was about time for me to um, become a member. I just felt like the time was right and I wanted to um, commit myself, I suppose, to, um, to the meeting. You will have noticed that we have a, a book, a large red book, and its title is significant. It is Quaker Faith and Practice. And for Quakers, those two things go hand in hand because our faith, whatever it is, is concerned with values. And we have five values that, at the moment, are ones that are significant for us. One is simplicity. The next is truthfulness and integrity. The next is equality. The next is peace, and the peace testimony. And the third, fifth is sustainability. Those then become, as it were, the core of our faith that we have in the forefront of our minds, which we put into practice. We try to marry what is the re real teaching about Quakerism, Quakerism and what the practical aspect of it. For example, um, uh, I do help uh, homeless people uh, during Christmas week, as well as uh, every month I work uh, for Quaker Mobile Library. That for me is this practical aspect of uh, being Quaker, to be able to see other group of community which probably need some help. Blackheath Meeting has been involved with um, asylum seekers for about 15 years. We work with about 15 churches in the borough of Lewisham and the same churches who started with us 12, 15 years ago are still giving food. We collect food people bring to meeting um, uh, packets of pasta, long life milk, things like that. And we also uh, give quite a lot of money. There are individuals who uh, give me money for the asylum seekers and we have a collection once a year. One activity of the Eco Group is introducing young people to the catastrophic effect on marine life of plastic waste through a print your bag project in local schools. We've seen some clips um, about how plastic um, um, hurts and destroys places and or hurts animals by like in the sea it strangles ducks or suffocates turtles. So we're going to make bags that um, to try and get give the message to people to stop using, wasting plastic bags and throwing them away. In art we had we sort of designed them and we had to make something catchy to like catch people's eyes really and so we came up with like mottos and stuff and we used white colours to design them. There's a lovely quilt that hangs on one of the walls as you come into the meeting house um, made by members to celebrate 25 years of the meeting house made from bits of silk left over from someone who used to work for Liberties and it's, uh, it's multicoloured and has one of my favourite quotations uh, on the, uh, running across the bottom, which is, live adventurously. 
I think it's a very good philosophy and one, one tries to do that every day. I can see several ways that newcomers can find out more about Quakers. Often one of the nicest things to do is to start by speaking to one of the people who's known as an elder and they'll sit and talk with you and give you some more background. But we do also have a library that you can borrow from and quite often there's a bookstall in the lobby of the meeting house where there are books for sale. So there are various ways that you can increase your knowledge of Quakerism and the history of, of the Society of Friends. Once a month we have a discussion after meeting on Quaker issues. If people wish to, they can join in our special interest groups that meet about once a month. Currently we have a healing group, an exploring spiritual paths group, a book group and an eco group. In the winter months we have evening study sessions for those interested to discover more. Central to everything we do is the regular Sunday meeting for worship and that may be enough for many people. The point of Quaker meeting is it's a shared experience of our spiritual journey and it's people who come together who want to share in that experience and to explore together. And people are on different points in that path, different points of their spiritual journey. It's an experience that I appreciate uh, very much. And uh, I, I try to come every week and uh, find that um, it's a, a blessing to me to use an old-fashioned word. <laughs> we hope that we have given you a glimpse of who Blackheath Quakers are and what we do. Should you wish to visit, you would be most welcome.